Thyroid eye disease and Graves' disease are confusing terms, and rightfully so. It's actually changed over the years. I'm going to explain to you the difference between the two, the areas affected, the common symptoms, the pathophysiology, or the what's going on biologically, the autoimmune areas that are involved, and the treatment. Graves' disease has been around for a long time. The reason it's called Graves' disease is the doctor that diagnosed it was Robert Graves in 1835. But it became real popular when President George Bush and his wife Barbara Bush both had Graves' disease. So did Olympic medalist Gail Beavers, and of course, everybody's favorite, Rodney Dangerfield. He had Graves' disease, but elected not to treat it because he used it as part of his spiel with his comedy. The areas that are affected with Graves' disease, think of it more as a systemic disease that affects primarily the thyroid, where thyroid eye disease is what is the manifestations locally around the eye or what we call the orbit. For Graves' disease, you can be hyperthyroid, you can be what's called euthyroid, meaning you have a normal thyroid level, or you can be hypothyroid. Hypothyroid is now called Hashimoto's disease. It used to be called Graves' disease. Whereas thyroid eye disease is a progressive inflammatory disease of the muscle in the orbit called myositis and the fatty tissue in the orbit. Graves' disease has what we call a hot or a cold phase, meaning if it's hot, that it's very inflammatory. If it's cold, it's quiet and stable, which is where we want it to be. Thyroid eye disease is pretty much always in the hot phase. It's always progressive, there's always a lot of inflammation going on. With Graves' disease, 50% of people that have Graves' disease will progress and have thyroid eye disease. So that kind of shows you the areas that are affected. One's a little more systemic thinking about the thyroid. The other one is more localized to the eye tissues. Please make sure to subscribe. When we think about Graves' disease, you get tachycardia, your heart is beating fast. You get irritability. You can have weight loss for no reason. You're not trying to lose weight, but you drop 15, 20 pounds. You can have anxiety. You can feel nervous and have tremors. Sometimes you get very fatigued when you used to not get fatigued. And the other one that happens is you sweat very easily, something called hyperhidrosis, meaning that most of the people around you are not sweating, but you're sweating because of the extra metabolism going on in your body because of inflammation. Thyroid eye disease, I like to compare it to, if you think of the orbit, that's the bones around your eyeball. If you think of a waffle cone where it's fixed and you have a big scoop of ice cream that sits in there, that's your eyeball in your orbital bones, a waffle cone. If your eyeball tissues get larger, like you're trying to stuff more ice cream in there, it's a fixed waffle cone. It's either going to protrude out, which is called proptosis, where the eye will protrude out from the orbital bone, and it also can affect the muscles. The muscles around your eye are kind of like the reins on a horse. So you have an inside, outside, top, bottom. The muscle that gets involved the most with thyroid eye disease is the lower muscle called the inferior rectus. So what happens is if, if, my, if I have scar tissue holding my arm, I can't lift my arm very well. So then you get double vision. And then the other thing that happens is your eyelid and your globe, your eyeball are trying to raise against that scar tissue and you get what's called a lid retraction. Your eyelid goes above your iris of your eye and people get that stare. That's called lid retraction and it's a very sensitive sign of thyroid eye disease. A lot of people will present with redness and irritation and that gritty feeling 
and they get misdiagnosed as conjunctivitis or, or eye allergies. Every year people are sent to me that have been misdiagnosed and it's not because the doctors you know, aren't good doctors, but it's what we call the great masquerade syndrome with thyroiditis disease. It can present in so many different ways. You also get this dull pain in your orbit because you have this closed waffle cone and all of this inflammatory tissue is expanding in a closed space. So you get this dull ache back behind your eye. A lot of people think it's sinus disease, but it's thyroid eye disease. And that can even lead to pushing on the optic nerve. If you think of the optic nerve like an extension cord that goes from the eyeball back through the oral bones into your brain, if that extension cord gets squeezed too much, you literally can go blind from having thyroid eye disease. That's why it's so important when you have those symptoms to see a specialist with thyroid eye disease because you can prevent that from happening. The other thing you get is with the proptosis going forward, you get dryness on the front of your eye called the cornea. It's like the, it's analogous to the crystal on your watch. You can get a little ulcer. And the tissue around your eyeball, it's like the mucous membrane in your mouth called conjunctiva. It can get fluid in it and it almost looks like a little jellyfish around your eyes because of that extra fluid. There's a lot of symptoms that you get with thyroid eye disease, but as you've seen, a lot of those symptoms can go with other conditions, and that's why it's commonly considered for specialists kind of a masquerade syndrome, and there's that big push to see a thyroid eye disease specialist. When we consider the treatment of both Graves' disease and thyroid eye disease, it's important to know what the causes are, and then you can understand what the treatments are and what's available, whether it be surgery, non-surgical, and, and certainly different types of medical treatment. The cause of thyroid eye disease has to do with what's called IGF, and it releases these inflammatory immune complexes called cytokines. And these complexes will attach to the muscles and they will cause that muscle to enlarge in characteristic ways. When I do a CT scan or an MRI scan to look at the detailed anatomy behind the eyeball that I can't see clinically, it's very characteristic. Being here in Atlanta, I call it the Coca-Cola bottle sign. And what I mean by that is the insertion narrows where it attaches to the back of the eye and the side of the eye, and then the muscle enlarges, and then it narrows again. So it looks like a Coke bottle. You only see that with thyroid involvement. When you have something called orbital inflammatory syndrome, or what's called pseudotumor, pseudo meaning false, tumor meaning swelling, that's commonly confused with thyroid eye disease when somebody has orbital inflammation. But it's characteristic when you see the Coca-Cola bottle sign of which one is which. These inflammatory cells are also called GAG, which stands for glucosaminoglycans. So all of it has to do with autoimmune and all of it has to do with inflammation. So for non-medical, just think lots of inflammation going on. What are we gonna to do to reverse that? So when you talk about Graves' disease, the first thing we do usually is radioactive iodine. It's very specific for the thyroid gland, which is located right in your neck. It has uptake of iodine. So if you put in radioactive iodine, you basically kill off the thyroid gland. Then what's done is you give a medicine, which is basically thyroid hormone, so that your body can regulate your thyroid, and then you work with the endocrinologist, and you make sure your blood level of your thyroid stays in a certain range. There's also something called beta blockers. You've probably heard of beta blockers for high blood pressure. 
But in this case, beta blockers are used because you get a real bad tremor from the thyroid and it can help control your tremor. And then the last thing that's done, if it's necessary, is the actual removal of the thyroid gland. And there's been controversy over the years. Some people are in favor of removing the thyroid gland. They feel like it leads less to thyroid eye disease. Some people are more in favor of leaving the thyroid gland and given the radioactive iodine that shuts down the function of the thyroid gland. That's beyond the scope of this discussion. You would want to talk to your endocrinologist and your oculofacial surgeon about that. When it comes to thyroid eye disease, the greatest thing that we've had is something called Tepeza. It works at the IGF location. So if you look at the, the complex immune system, it works right there. We have never had a medication that treats thyroid eye disease until we got to peasant. We have always used medicines like steroids to control the immune function to lessen the degree. We've used things that help with symptoms like ocular lubrication. And then the last thing that we do, if we can't control it medically, is we do surgery. So if you think about an eye that's sticking out of that waffle cone, we want that eyeball back into that waffle cone. So we'll do what's called a decompression. We borrow some sinus space, which is basically air, and we move the eye back. That's called decompression. When that happens, remember we have that inflammation in the muscle. So we also sometimes have to operate on the muscle if one of the eyes is pulling out, causing double vision, we have to work on that muscle to get the eye straight again. And then the last thing we work on is you get lid retraction. Remember how the lids are pulling up against the scarred muscle? Well, we have to do some work on those lids to get them back down. Because if we don't get them down, not only does somebody have that stare, but more importantly, they don't have lubrication to their eye and you can get a corneal ulcer. And if you don't treat the ulcer, that can lead to blindness. So it's a very complex disease, very critical to have a team that's involved in your treatment. We've covered a lot of material in this video. So I'd like to give you a brief summary. When you think about Graves' disease, think about the body being involved. You're getting symptoms that affect your whole body. When you think about thyroid eye disease, it's more localized. Think about your ski goggles, your eyeglasses, it's all in that area. So when you think about treatment, whatever affects the whole body, that's gonna be Graves' disease. Whether you're affecting the thyroid gland or you're you know, do, having to do things for the symptoms like tremor, weight loss, things like that, it's systemic. The only surgery you could have is if you remove your thyroid gland. So it's either medical or surgical for Graves' disease. When you think about thyroid eye disease, again, medical first, which is Tepeza. Symptoms, which are lubrication and doing things to control anything that's bothering the eye. And then lastly, surgical, where we might make more space for the eye or affect the eye muscles or the eyelid skin. And then lastly, I think it deserves clarity, the word Graves' disease used to include thyroid eye disease. It was Graves' disease systemically, Graves' orbitopathy, which is the orbit, and it was Graves' dermatopathy, which was the skin, all affected under Graves' disease. Now, we're trying to clarify, and so the nomenclature has been changed where Graves' disease is only the systemic involving the thyroid gland. Thyroid eye disease is specifically involving the eye and the orbit. A lot of doctors that have been doing this for a while will say Graves' orbitopathy, Graves' ophthalmopathy, that is now strictly thyroid eye disease. If you like this content, please make sure to subscribe for more to come.